everyone. Um, my name is Mimi Healy. I work for the Costs of War Project. Um, I'm a research assistant there, and I do a lot of like website assistance and copy editing and all kinds of various things. Um, so the Costs of War Project, um, I don't know if and if you have heard of it before, but it is housed at Brown University um, at the Watson Institute, which is their school for um, international and public affairs. Um, and the Cost of War Project uh, is essentially a research project that works with scholars from all over the world to publish papers examining the various costs and ripple effects of the post 9-11 wars. So that was called like the global war on terror that was coined by George Bush, um, you know, after 9-11. Um, and so the co-founders of Costs of War, one of them is an anthropologist named Catherine Lutz, and the other one is a political scientist named Nita Crawford. They were both professors at Brown, and in 2011, they really noticed that, you know, 10 years after 9-11 and 10 years of being at war um, through this war on terror, they noticed that, you know, a lot of the approach to fighting that war and to spending money on that war and people's perceptions of just constantly being at war for the past 10 years was, you know, really lacking. Like people either weren't talking very much about it or it felt like something that was just kind of happening in the background. So they developed the Cost of War project to really acknowledge all of the, you know, horrible ways that war impacts people's lives. Um, so that's looking at the economic costs. So like how much does the government spend? How much does it impact us um, through, you know, taxes or through taking away money that could be spent otherwise? So the economic costs, we look at the human and social costs. So um, how does this impact people's lives? Everything from, you know, death and the loss of human life to um, if someone loses their house and their job um, through a bomb um, and they're, you know, a woman whose husband died and she doesn't have another option for work, uh, what does she do with her life, you know, or um, things like that. Um, and then we look at the political cost. So how does, how did the post 9-11 wars and our response to it as a country in the US and other responses, how has that changed politics? How has um, our political establishment really been molded through 20 plus years of war now? Um, and economic, oh, and environmental cost. Um, so Nita Crawford, the political scientist that I mentioned, a lot of her work is around the environmental costs of war. So um, she actually recently wrote a book that looks at climate change in relation to the US military and um, war because the US Department of Defense is actually the largest emitter of greenhouse gases like the largest single institution emitter of greenhouse gases in the world. But, you know, of course, like the government isn't usually talking about that, right? When when we're talking about all the green initiatives that are happening and it's always uh, outside of like reigning in our military uh, and, you know, all the jet fuel that happened, that, that, uh, just pollutes the earth and also looking at environmental impacts such as um you know in Iraq and Afghanistan places that have been heavily bombed had these burn pits in the ground um have been contaminated in so many different ways how does the environmental impact of war 
contribute to birth defects or unclean water and what effect does that have so the project really looks at like all of these various things and um the goal is really just to change you know or not change as much as like encourage the narrative around these wars to really critically um hold our government accountable and to kind of through like an activist goal to to really ask like was this worth it what came of these wars um how can we learn from this um and you know we're so fortunate to live in a country where we can hold our government accountable and where we can question um the the military and the government there's so many countries where you know you'd be thrown in jail um or targeted um heavily so so we really want to take advantage of that and as citizens of this country to and and you know and as like just people with um wanting a more peaceful and just world how can we uh question everything that's happened since post 9 11 uh you know and i mean since 9 11 how can we question the larger umbrella of everything that's happened and how that's affected us as a country. So yeah, I mean, as a younger person, I guess now, something that really impacted me when learning about the work that Cost of War does is just how much of this has, of, of being at war for over 20 years, you know, in this war on terror since 2001, how much of that has really impacted like our lives and inequality in this country and elsewhere. So, you know, I can like give you guys a bunch of statistics that we found. Um, but I guess I just wanted to say that first off, because when you've been at war or when you've lived in a country that's been at war for most of your life or all of your life, probably in, in all of your cases, um, it becomes sort of background noise and, you know, we don't, uh, take into account maybe the everyday reality that's happening on the ground in countries that we've invaded or, um, have provided, you know, training and assistance to and what exactly that really means. Um, so that's something just personally, like when I learned about the project, I really became interested in that. Um, I think that I think of war as like this umbrella and a lot of other um, ways that we see inequality or, you know, big issues like climate change, a lot of social justice issues, um, those all can kind of fall under the umbrella of war um you know in terms of like what lens you look at it through um so so I guess with that being said um you know not only like questioning the narrative of war right like how are we how have you been taught about war and um as students like what has your your uh perspective on war been um because I think it's kind of, like I said, easy to detach from that. But something that I really appreciate about the project is that it really grounds that in like our lived experience and in learning the lived experience of people um, who have been impacted by these wars. So, you know, I'll, I'll just kind of give you some statistics like off the bat. Um, and one thing with statistics, right, is like, we hear numbers all the time, especially with the internet, like you're consuming data or visualizations or infographics all day long. Um, and it's hard to make sense of these numbers. Um, so that's something that, you know, we're always kind of wanting to think about, like, how can we not just gloss over this and really take into account um the destruction that's happened and use that to hopefully create change um so you know our research has found that almost a million uh that the post 9 11 wars have caused almost a million direct deaths so that's death that has been caused by direct 
combat, by bombs, by airstrikes, by like direct targeted operations in war. But we had a paper come out last year that recently um, found that for every one direct death, there's about three to four times as many indirect deaths. And so an indirect death is the deaths that are caused by like ongoing ramifications of war. So if, you know, hospitals have been targeted and there's no healthcare or infrastructure, houses are lost, or, you know, the water is contaminated and there's disease or there's lack of sanitation, all of these things can continue for years and years and years and generations. Um, so, you know, we've, we came out with a number last year that given the direct and indirect deaths of um, post 9-11 wars, these could lead, this could be at least 4.5 to 4.7 million people have died from these wars. And um, the war zones that we include in our research are um, Afghanistan, Iraq, uh, Syria, Libya, Yemen. Let me make sure I'm not forgetting one. Um, yeah, I think those are Pakistan. Yeah, Afghanistan, Pakistan, Iraq, Syria, Yemen, um, Libya are like the main ones that have been the main countries that have felt probably some of the largest impacts. But um, now, you know, I don't know if you all have like seen in the news um, or, you know, read about it in class or anything, but the U.S. is really engaged with Africa. Um, so, you know, we would count like Somalia in a lot of those counts um, in a lot of our research because the U.S. has conducted so many airstrikes targeting a terrorist group called Al-Shabaab um, in that country. Um, so that's, that's another, I guess that leads me to another thing. Like that is something that's really interesting about the war on terror, you know, is that, you know, the twin towers in New York were attacked by uh, members of Al Qaeda and, uh, around 3000 people died, um, in, in the U S and so, uh, you know, we invaded Afghanistan um, later in 2003, we invaded Iraq um, and then have since conducted what is called a counter terror. So like trying to fight terrorism, um, this idea of terrorism that really like sprung up more in 2001, it really became like so prominent. Um, so we've we had a paper come out last year that found that we engage in counter terrorism operations in 78 countries. I guess one thing also that is really interesting economically is that um, our research has found that the these wars have cost over $8 trillion.